bother setting up the slides here, I'll introduce myself. I'm Kevin Jacobson, I'm from NASA Langley. Um, so like Elliot said, this talk is gonna be on Infis, and we will jump right in. So I think Keem's kind of covered this a bit earlier this morning, what's the state of high fidelity coupling in MDAO? Um, so in industry, they're regularly using high fidelity tools within their MDAO processes, but maybe not coupled together. So they might do sequential evaluation of aerodynamics, optimize that for drag, move to the structures with those loads, optimize the structure and go back and forth. But with the state of that research has shown, especially this morning, that we see the benefits of these coupled sensitivities where if you let the optimizer see these interactions, it can exploit some of these things or see solutions that you wouldn't see with this sequential approach. Now with high fidelity optimization, we're pretty limited in the problems we can do, maybe two or three disciplines at a time, and we don't have all the constraints that we need. So optimizers are gonna tell you which constraints you don't have, so we need to figure out how to integrate these tools with some of our low fidelity tools to really form a complete optimization problem. Uh, another problem with this field is that, at least up until MFIS, everyone's kind of done their own implementation of their framework. So Michigan had a code, Georgia Tech had a code, Wyoming, I think SU2 had two or three in there too. So with everyone working in these different frameworks, it's hard to share progress between these different groups and then also extend this to new disciplines. Um, I've got a time domain adjoint equation in the bottom there. So we, we've done some time domain adjoint stuff in the past, but you can see just with two disciplines, this is a shape derivative equation. So it gets very complicated very quickly here when you're doing these high fidelity codes. Each one of those terms is a high fidelity code there. Um, so just to reiterate this point with the CFD Vision 2030 report for non-CFD people, this was a report in around 2014, which a bunch of industry academics and people said, this is what NASA needs to do between now and 2030 to get to where CFD should be by 2030. Um, there's a few grand challenge problems in there and one of them is high fidelity MDAO of a full aircraft with aero structures, acoustics, every, everything in there. And they, they said there's really three main roadblocks we need to overcome to do this. One's computational cost, uh, the automation of these high fidelity models. There's a lot of uh, expertise needed to build some of these things, generate the meshes. But the one we're really focused on here with MFIS is this last one. So time and expertise required to generate these capabilities. And I'll drive this home with their quote there. They, they say that it's really limited by one-off laborious non-standard interfaces. And I think Keen mentioned that it's, it's a, pretty laborious to work with these things this morning too. So our goals with MFIS are really try to make these tools more accessible to fit into other optimization problems or just try to get it into from the research to uh, applied problems. And we're doing that by trying to create this modular uh, environment and standardizing our interfaces across all these different groups working in this area. And then using M uh, OpenMDO as the backbone to automate the coupling there. Um, so it's a, collect a collective effort. We've got people from industry, government, academia. We talk every couple weeks trying to agree on these standards and how we're gonna do some things that maybe aren't necessarily just in OpenMDO, uh, like mesh data, things like that. And it's open source, it's where you can find OpenMDO as well. And the package itself, it's, it's actually pretty small. I think most of the work actually goes into taking these codes and fitting them into a, a, a way that OpenMDO can interact with them. But the library itself, uh, I'll get into this more in a couple slides, these, these standardized multi-physics uh, scenarios that we then can build our optimization problems up. And when you have these big models, you can very quickly have very large Python scripts to set up your problems. So we have some tools to help try to set up these optimization problems as well. Okay, so MFIS is providing this library of standardized multi-physics scenarios. So that's over on the right there. We've got maybe aerostructural, aeropulsive coupling. Uh, maybe you've got some load constraint where you need structures only. And then what we do is we take these from MFIS and we're trying to assemble them into a maybe a multi-point optimization. So we have a multi-point group there that's gonna hold all our different scenarios. But now we need to populate this with our components from our different solvers. So we have these classes that are Python classes defined outside of OpenDO called builders. And what these do is they have some functions that are basically these scenarios in a query to pull in the correct components to populate the models where they need to get populated according to the standards we've set here. So the, the process here is you, you pick your scenarios you're gonna use, you pick your builders you're gonna use, give the builders to the scenarios, add them to your, your multi-point group, which is basically just an OpenMDO group there. Uh, so maybe just a quick example here. Here's an air propulsive scenario. We have our, our core coupling group, which Anil's talked about this morning a lot. 
And with MFIS, we have the ability, maybe solvers want to provide something that happens before the coupling group or after the coupling group. So we have these pre and post coupling subsystem options as well that they can add. So for this X59, maybe you're interested in uh, the boom signature of these models. So you're doing your air propulsive coupling and then you're feeding that result to this post coupling boom propagation tool and then you might be using that for your objective or constraint. Like I said, we're, we're typically doing multi-point optimization here. So you, you take your scenarios, stack them up, and you might have components before or after, which you would put in this multi-point group. So geometry driving the, the shape of the, the vehicle here, deforming the CFD volume mesh, and then using that deformed volume mesh at each one of your scenarios, and then maybe computing some, uh, some constraint or, or objective from your different scenarios you've run after the scenarios have run there. Uh, so what are we doing under the hood here? This is really all MFIS uh, does is we, we define this standard of what these variable names should be. And when we're talking about our coupling variables, as long as we have these, we can plug in different solvers. Um, and then if we, wanna, if we want a variable to go outside of our disciplinary subsystem, we use tags. So there's a line there for angle of attack where we're tagging this as an MFIS input. And we add on top of the standard OpenMDO group, this MFIS group, which has this call MFIS add subsystem. It does the same thing as a regular add subsystem, but it holds on to this component to say, okay, on the configure phase of the setup, we're going to promote these tag variables. So we're not just promoting everything so we don't have conflicts of variable names, just specific variables. Um, and if you're not familiar with the configure phase, so when you do setup, you're kind of going down the hierarchy of the model, and then when you do configure, you're going back up. So we're we're slowly pushing these variable names back up to the top where we want them. Um, so then our, our coupling group inside of our scenario and our scenarios are both, version, they're both MFIS groups. So by the time you've set up your model, uh, all the coupling has been done by promotion for the, the coupling group and the pre and post coupling. But then we're also promoting our inputs and outputs. So like if you have an angle of attack variable, you might have an aerodynamic solver that's got a pre-coupling, a, a coupling, and a post-coupling but then you might have a different aerodynamic solver that only has a coupling group. So you don't have to connect, okay, for this solver I need to go here, here, and here, or this one I just need to go in one spot. It's just maybe our, our scenario name is cruise, so it's just cruise.angle of attack. So it's trying to make it easier for setting up these problems here. Uh, so I, I think this morning we've seen aero propulsive. I'm gonna show a little bit of our aero structural stuff and then Josh is gonna talk about aero uh, thermal uh, tomorrow. And basically we're trying to define uh, our interfaces and agree to what these variables are, what to name them, uh, things like that. So, so here's an example for aerostructural, that, that's my background. So uh, for, for an aerodynamic solver within an aerostructural problem, the inputs to this subsystem are gonna be the, the surface coordinates. That could be geometry changes or air elastic deflections. And then the outputs are gonna be the forces back on that surface. And now what the aerodynamic solver does inside of there is up to the developer. So for a CFD code, we have a volume mesh, so we take our surface coordinates, deform the, the, deform the mesh to update to that surface, and then uh, solve the CFD problem, integrate the forces. But for a code like a vortex lattice code, you don't have a volume mesh, so you can go straight to the flow solver and then integrate the forces. But as far as the rest of the problem is concerned, it all looks the same. Um, and so with this modularity, we can attach a bunch of different codes into the same framework. So on the top left there, you can see we've got, what, five or so CFD solvers, a couple of vortex lattice codes, some structural solvers. Uh, through PyGeo, we can connect to OpenVSP like Emil was doing, or Engineering Sketchpad. And then on the right side, you can see some of the applications of this from uh, uh, the bottom ones there from the quad project that Matt was talking about yesterday, but the aerostructural side of that project, and some uh, from Brett and I from NASA, and then Michigan as well there. Okay, so now, now that we have this modularity, what are we gonna do with it? Well, I think the key point here uh, is, is easier transition of technology. So when one of our academic partners develops some new geometric constraint and they're using their solvers, we can immediately take that, plug in our solvers at NASA, or maybe industry has their own preferred solvers, and directly use that capability right off the bat. We don't want to re-implement ourselves within our own frameworks, so that that's gonna make things a lot easier uh, to transition technology from from people we're funding to do research and to people using our codes. Uh, this one definitely applies to me. I, I never get set up the optimization problem right the first time, so we can 
we can work on problems with low fidelity, kind of work out the scaling of design variables, what constraints are missing, or if you've got uh, competing objectives, trying to figure out the weights of those properly with the low fidelity, and then turn on the high fidelity once you've properly set up your problem. And then these models are always going to be expensive, especially CFD-based models. So we can start doing some techniques to reduce the amount of CFD we need and try to only use it where it's absolutely needed. Uh, so on the bottom left here, we're doing some sequencing of physics. So we start this aerostructural optimization with a vortex lattice aerodynamics. That's all these black points. And then once that's pretty much converged, we switch to the CFD solver. So uh, each one of those little red CFD points probably cost as much as the entire black section. So you can imagine we're saving a lot of cost by starting with that vortex lattice code there. But again, because it's, it's modular, we're not changing the, the optimization problem or even the structural or load displacement transfer there, just the, just the CFD block in the, in the problem here. Um, and then we're also starting to get in some multi-fidelity optimization. So we have our model with both the high fidelity and low fidelity flutter constraint. And basically, it's, it's a trust region uh, model management approach. So you're, you're doing a trust region method, method with the lower fidelity model and then doing corrections with the high fidelity as needed to try to get the high fidelity result in the end, but do it with as few uh, evaluations as that is possible. Um, another one I think mentioned a little bit yesterday is Kriegen models or Gaussian processes. So we're, we're doing some of that for UQ where we potentially have uh, multiple failure boundaries that we're trying to identify the most probable failure point. So because we have these gradients with MFIS and OpenMDAO, we can do gradient-enhanced Kriging or gradient-enhanced Gaussian processes to try to reduce the cost of building our surrogate models in order to find this most probable failure point here. Uh, so just a quick example of an error structural optimization. We're going to talk more about this tomorrow. But uh, here we're doing some flutter constraints on a, on a a guard wing. This is a standard air elastic case. Uh, we're actually doing it a subsonic condition because we want to compare the results from a doublet lattice code to a CFD code, make sure if where both of these codes are applicable, they get the same results. So we're minimizing the mass of this wing subject to our flutter constraint. So the flutter constraints in the bottom left there, uh, these are air elastic eigenvalues. We want to keep those uh, negative in the region where we're going to fly so we don't flutter. And um, you can see we're actually starting from a a design where it is going to flutter below our expected flutter point. And our design variables are the panels of this uh, wing box here. So there's uh, 100 thickness variables and then root and tip cord, sweep and span. Um, so like I said, we're running this with two different fidelities. The optimization problem is identical. The structural solver, the transfer schemes are all identical. And we can see at the end result here, they, they shift the, the thicknesses to almost try to make the, the structure look more like a swept forward wing, uh, but we, we get very good agreement between the two results, although the double lattice runs much faster at this condition. So uh, the idea here is just to try to ground this, and then eventually we'll take this to where the CFD is running at transonic conditions where the double lattice isn't really applicable. So I, there's a discussion yesterday about an arms race between developers and users. I think we're kind of pushing on them, not from large models in terms of number of components, but just large distributed vectors. So we've got vectors that are millions of degrees of freedom, distributed computing, where we're really pushing the limits of what OpenMDO is doing on that front. So I, I pulled together a quick list of maybe seven things that have changed in, in OpenMDO itself based off of things that have been happening in, in MFIS. Uh, I think a big one was distributed variables rather than distributed components, because most distributed code, you still have serial, serial inputs, like angle of attack, things like that. Um, and then <clears throat> some efficiency changes as well. So I, I just threw that up there. But uh, just to conclude here, we're, it's a collaborative effort to try to standardize high fidelity coupling in, in OpenMDAO. So we're really trying to address this uh, CFD 2030 uh, characteristic of high fidelity MDAO where it's one off and laborious non-standard interfaces where we've now connected, what, seven different aerodynamic solvers, different structural solvers to the same framework and been able to plug them in and out and been able to utilize that a lot. Um, and then we're also providing some utilities and some standards to try to set up these optimization problems, make it easier for users to pick these up as well. And with this flexibility, we can uh, substitute out different solvers, switch fidelities on the same problem, and even solve different multi-physics problems. So I've shown aerostructural here. You've seen air repulsive this morning, and we'll see more tomorrow as well. So tomorrow, the workshop, we're going to be 
going deep, more detail in some of these results, and then the afternoon we'll be planning the next steps of this. So if you'd like to be part of this or, or help us decide what to do next, please join us tomorrow, and we'd love to hear your input. And with that, I'll open it to questions. Could you elaborate on the lower order solution that you use for the elastic analysis? Yeah, so uh, it's a frequency domain double lattice that we're then feeding into a, a PK flutter solver. So uh, just trying to solve for your eigen, your air elastic eigenvalues based off of almost like a sure complement approach that Anil's doing. But you're 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 doing your air dynamics to compute generalized aerodynamic forces in the frequency domain at various frequencies, and then interpolating that data to figure out where the eigenvalues cross that that into that uh, unstable range. Um, yeah, one of the things I really liked about OpenMDO and DIMOS was there's a, a lot of examples that I, I used to learn uh, how to do everything and, yep. you know, understand. Um, are you guys planning on adding uh, some more in-depth uh, examples and things like that, so yeah. in tutorials so people can learn it? Yeah, I think we're going to talk about that tomorrow. I, I think at, up to this point, it's kind of been people developing MFIS that have been involved, but especially because we've got these large codes, it's even if we had a simple example of like, hey, here's a narrow structural problem, you have to compile five or six different codes just to get to be able to run that example. So we're we're trying to come up with examples that are, are easy to pick up and maybe plug in your own solver and also maybe look at, uh, Michigan's got a, a Docker image that they publicly host that has a lot of the dependencies you would need for some of these examples. So trying to have some open source codes and examples that you can just pick up and run with. So we're, we're definitely thinking about that more. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks for the talk. There's some some really cool stuff. Um, if I understand the the LFD uh, flutter process correctly, you kind of do like a steady CFD solve first, and then linearize around that. Yep. Um, how does that work with with MFIS? Is that all within kind of one aero scenario? Is or is the flutter like a post coupling yep. step? Yeah, so the, we, we can do it either with just a pure aerodynamic solve. So in this case, it's a symmetric wing, so there's no need to do the aeroelastic coupling. But the, the flutter group is all part of the, the post-coupling subsystem. So we, we feed the steady state flow into that. And then within that flutter group, we've got the linearized frequency domain flow solve, which feeds into the PK solver to give us our constraint value there. Without going into all the details, that sequence is what caused one of the major changes to OpenMDAO. It forced us to redesign some of the linear solver algorithms to handle a case that I think is probably a little bit different than you guys in the MDO lab have seen, but it's a really good example of how this stuff kind of pushes evolution in OpenMDAO, and then everybody gets to benefit. Okay, and Anil's adding that the configure method was also part of these efforts. I, I didn't have that on my list, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering about, you were talking about some of the ways that you integrate disciplines in MFIS and that sort of thing. I'm wondering about new user integration. How much of an overhead is it if I'm a new user with the high fidelity <clears throat> tool and I want to integrate it in order to make it compatible with MFIS, both in OpenMDAO language and also in your variable language and that sort of thing? Yeah, that's, like I said, that's probably where most of this effort has gone into. There's not a lot of code in MFIS itself, um, especially with these legacy codes that weren't written to work in OpenMDO. But in terms of what we're asking from a developer, it's, it's basically just OpenMDO components. And then if you've got some particular variables we're trying to couple, you just name them properly and it plugs in. So uh, our naming scheme is not nearly as complex as what you guys are doing. So maybe we need to think about that a bit more. But um, there's also the capability, if, if you had maybe an MFIS scenario and you were promoting that to run an aviary or something like that, you could change the name at that point. So, um. You don't want to completely oversell it, though. The, the changes to some of the solvers to make them compatible with MFIS is extensive. Uh, yeah. 
So like full rewrites in, in some cases, like in Fun3D there. Not all of that was due to MFIS, but a lot of a lot of the underlying structure that MFIS requires makes you really have to consider how your solver is going to interact with the outside world. And I don't think that's unique to MFIS or OpenMDO. I think that's in general for coupled adjoints. Uh, before MFIS, when we were doing this with FundFM at Georgia Tech, it took just as much effort to to form a coupled adjoint. So it's 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 a CFD issue. It's not a OpenMDO issue there. I have a question more on your structure side, and I know you kind of focused on the CFD portion, but yeah. um, have you tried, and if you have, have you had any difficulty with um, switching between solution methods where a coupling exists in a high fidelity method and it doesn't in a low fidelity method? Like for example, a low fidelity rigid solver might not have displacements, but a high fidelity uh, FEM solver would. Yeah, I think the lowest fidelity we've gone to is beam. So we've, okay. we've always had displacements in there. Um, I, I think that's what we really need for the aerodynamic side, so I don't know how we'd handle it without displacements. I don't know if one of the structures guys at that table over there has more input. <laughs> okay, no, we haven't thought about it. <laughs> Any additional questions? All right, in that case, thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs>